Special Education Ed TPA Task Number One Writing Day. In this video, I'm reading from slides verbatim, or I'm silent, to allow for you to read the screen. The outcome: complete a rough draft of the commentary for Task One. Materials: a laptop, Ed TPA handbook, lesson plans, instructional materials, planned assessments and understanding rubric level progressions. Writing process. Look at the one and three rubric level progressions for the prompt. Review prompts and rubrics one at a time. Independently write prompts. Writing format. Topic sentence, supporting details, one, two, and three, a closing summary sentence. Guidelines for the writing process. Evidence, evidence, evidence. Give a specific example to support your answers. Make sure you respond to what the prompt asks. Show how your learning goal is aligned with the IEP, content standards, learning objectives, planned supports, and assessments. Arial 11 within the bracket. Prompt one, alignment of the learning goal, IEP, standard, lesson objectives, and planned supports. Understanding rubric level progressions, prompt one, what to avoid. An automatic one, not applicable. Performance below a three. There is some level of a mismatch between the learning goal, the IEP goals, and or the benchmarks, lesson objectives, specific plan supports, and learning tasks and materials, or lesson objectives do not include clearly defined measurable outcomes. Prompt one, meeting the standard. Level three, Along with the learning goal, the following are consistently aligned with each other. Relevant IEP goals, lesson objectives, specific plan supports, and learning tasks and materials. As appropriate, these are related to the relevant state standards. All lesson objectives include clearly defined measurable outcomes for the focused learner's performance. If the learning goal is expressed in measurable terms and is assessed accordingly in each lesson, then it should be considered a lesson objective, even if it is not identified as such. Prompt 1A, complete the table below to identify the learning goal selected for the learning segment, the academic content standard, alternate standard, or early childhood standard related to the learning goal and where the plan supports the lesson objective for each lesson, and the planned supports to be used throughout the learning segment and described in the lesson plans specific to achieving the learning goal. Organizing prompt 1A. Here's an ESCE example. Lesson objective one, with the use of modeling, Larry will sort objects by color in four or five opportunities. Specific plant supports, I will model sorting objects by color and use the chart as a visual for Larry to refer to as needed. Use of graphic organizer, verbal cues, and reminders, extra wait time and praise throughout the lesson. Organizing prompt 1A, MCEA example, Student will subtract fractions with like denominators using a given visual model on three out of five attempts. Specific plan supports. Pre-made number lines given to the student during the lesson and on assessments, pre-partitioned with labeled unit fractions. Organizing prompt 1A, EAA example. Student will be able to graph the and identify the relationship between the circumference and diameter by accurately completing three out of three questions. Specific plan supports, teacher PowerPoint notes, scaled graph, strategic grouping, multiple visuals, manipulatives, flip chart, 
interactive activities, check-ins, reference to notes, and read aloud. Prompt 1B. Based on the learning goal and the focus learner's IEP goals, respond to one of the prompts below. If the selected learning goal is academic and is aligned with an IEP goal, explain how the learning goal and plan support align to the IEP goal. If the selected learning goal is academic but is not aligned with an IEP goal, explain how the plan supports align with the learning goal. Or, if the selected learning goal is non-academic, explain how the learning goal and, if relevant, the plan supports align with the focus learner's IEP. Organizing the prompt 1B. Since most of you are answering, if the selected learning goal is academic and is aligned with an IEP goal, explain how the learning goal and plan support align with the IEP goal. Specifically, state the IEP goal. Share your identified learning goal for your three to five lessons and explicitly show how it is connected to the IEP goal. Identify and discuss the plan supports. Show how they support the IEP and the learning goal. If you are using a gradual release model for your plan supports, you can address this here as well. Prompt 1C, list any special accommodations or modifications in the learning environment, instruction, or assessment required by the IEP and relevant to the learning goal. Organizing Prompt 1C, remind the evaluator how your focused learner receives instruction, general education, one-on-one, -on -one, etc. Specifically cite the part of the IEP goal that addresses accommodations and modifications. Show how you incorporated the above into your teaching practice. Zoom in on specific lessons, i.e. in lesson number one, dot, 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 dot. Show the connection to the learning goal. Prompt 1D. Explain how the lesson objectives, learning tasks, materials, and plan supports are sequenced to move the learner toward achievement of the IEP goals and standards as appropriate and the learning goal. Build connections between the focus learner's prior learning experiences and new learning for the learning goal. Note, if the lesson objectives are the same across the learning segment, the explanation may address how the materials used or the plan supports may change throughout the learning segment. Organizing Prompt 1D, note there are two parts to this prompt. Here's part one. State the IEP goal, again. What do the lesson objectives allow your focused learner to do and how do they support the IEP? How did you intentionally sequence the lessons, materials, and supports to move the focus learner toward achievement of the IEP goals and the learning goal? Gradual release. Moving the focus learner toward independence as lessons progress. Organizing prompt 1D, rubric 1, part 2. What specific prior knowledge did your focus student bring to your learning segment? Briefly highlight previously taught lessons, could be previous year, and show how they connect to your three to five lessons. How did you build on the focus learner's prior knowledge and connect to the learning goal? goal. Zoom in on specific examples from your lessons. Here's an exemplar. The context for learning is a comprehensive academic unit in a large urban district, one third grader, four fourth graders, and one fifth grader. Students have moderate intellectual disability, but their abilities, strengths, and weakness vary greatly. There are two aides in the room, a paraprofessional professional, and a handicapped children's assistant. I help organize their schedules and model working with the focus learner. We work on reading every day for about a half hour um, every morning, or sorry, an hour and a half every morning. The books we read are from the unique curriculum throughout and following the reading, we work on comprehension skills. I typically ask questions about things that were explicitly stated in the book and or can be answered by looking at the pictures. We then do another activity with our vocab words, typically in a game format. This whole group instruction typically takes about 45 minutes and then we split up into smaller learning groups. Each learning group has a turn working with myself, my paraprofessional and my HCA. I do a guided reading lesson at the student's level, paraprofessional works on phonics, and the HCA works on writing. My focus learner is in my mid-achieving reading group with one or more student. They have both just recently mastered their letter identification and sounds. Now they are, are working on decoding strategies, phonemic awareness, and sight word knowledge.
prompt two, knowledge of focus learner to inform teaching of the learning segment. Understanding rubric level progressions prompt two, what to avoid. An automatic one is the learning tasks and supports are not aligned to lesson objectives and or learning targets. Learning tasks and supports do not reflect required modifications and accommodations for the focus learner as specified in the IEP. Performance below a three. Plan supports are general rather than specific and are insufficient to help the focus learners progress toward achieving the learning goal evidenced by one or more of the following. Candidate does not plan supports for the focus learner, which are closely associated with lesson objectives and or the learning goal. Instructional strategies and supports materials are inappropriate for the learner's age and development. If they are required, candidates make little effort to modify. Relevant required modifications and accommodations from the IEP are not included in tasks and supports. Prompt two, meeting the standard. At a level three, the candidate's plans, um, specific supports reflecting the focus learner's strengths and or needs. Learning tasks and supports for the focus learner provide appropriate levels of support as determined by baseline data, prior learning experiences, and strengths or needs. Strengths can be from prior learning, lived experiences, language and communication development, or personal family and community or cultural assets. Prompt two for each of the categories listed below, 2A through G, describe what you know about the focus learner's strengths and challenges as related to the lesson objectives of the learning segment. Cite evidence of what the learner knows and what she or he can do and what she or he is learning to do in relation to the learning goal and any relevant plan supports. Re refer to baseline data obtained prior to the beginning of the learning segment. Prompt 2A, prior learning experiences, including prerequisite knowledge and skills related to the lesson objectives. Specifically reference the baseline data. Discuss what it tells you about the focus learner's prior learning related to what you are teaching. Prompt 2B, social and emotional development, impulse control, ability to interact and express him or herself and his or her feelings in constructive ways. Ability to engage and persist in individual and collaborative learning, social connectedness. Organizing prompt to be, if, it, if it's a part of the IEP, talk about it. If there's nothing in the IEP but you have observed issues, share specific examples. If the baseline data didn't measure social emotional development, then talk about what you've observed. Prompt 2C, personal family, community, and cultural assets. The focus learners, interests, strengths, relevant lived experiences, and self-management skills, family supports or resources, cultural expectations, community supports or resources. Organizing prompt to see. Show the connection between the above and accomplishing learning goal. Loves help taking care of brothers at home, translates into him loving helping adults at school. He helps me by handing out the materials. Loves basketball, so incorporated that into the math problems. 2D, if relevant, any other information about the focus learner that will influence your instructional planning, e.g. other needs and strengths in areas such as motor skills or communication. Organizing prompt 2B, examples needs multiple forms of communication, depends on visuals, the focus student doesn't use his notes, so I will blah, blah, blah. Prompt three, supporting learning. Rubric three, justification of instruction and supports. Understanding rubric level progressions for prompt three, what to avoid an automatic one here is the candidate's justification represents a deficit or stereotypic view of the focus learner and or his or her background. Performance below a three is that the candidate has considered the focus learner's needs or research theory when planning, but not in a detailed way 
or there's little to no justification of instruction and support strategies, or the candidate's justification is characterized by minimal support and expectations of low performance due to the learner's cultural or linguistic backgrounds, disability label, challenges external to school, or lack of family support. Understanding rubric level progressions prompt three, meeting the standard. Level three, for the learning goal, the candidate explains the relevance of instruction and specific plan support strategies with general references lacking detail to the focused learner's individual strengths and needs and to research and or theory. Note, do not mistake descriptions of previous instruction or other types of exposure to the learning segment content for learner strengths. They must clearly identify content a learner has mastered or materials or strategies a learner has used successfully or learner dispositions, e.g. persistence. Prompt 3a, refer to the instructional materials and lesson plans that you have included to support your justifications as needed. Describe how the learning task materials and plan supports address your focus learner's needs and capitalize on his, her strengths and interests. Identify specific strengths and interests of your student. Show how you intentionally connected them to your learning tasks, materials and supports, i.e. hands-on learners, so I used manipulatives, strategically placed the focus learner in groups with students he's comfortable with so he participates, which leads to successful completion of the learning goal, incorporate at least one word problem that aligns with the focus learner's interest outside of school, family, and love of cooking. Plan supports can include the learning environment, instructional strategies, learning tasks, materials, accommodations, modifications, assistive technology, prompts, and or scaffolding that are deliberately selected or designed to facilitate learning of the targeted knowledge and skills. Prompt 3b, explain how the learning tasks, materials, and our plan supports will provide challenge to your focused learner. Organizing Prompt 3b, to your lessons increase in difficulty, gradual release, tools, materials, resources you are using to provide challenge. How do your lessons promote independence? Justify your choice of learning tasks, materials, and plan supports based on the focus learner's strength and need, principles of research and theory. Organizing prompt 3C, there are two parts to this prompt. Part one, how do you connect content and supports to the learner's strengths and needs, i.e., I know from my experience that my focus learner's strength is making connections, and he makes the most academic gains when he can connect something to personal context. So I blah, 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 blah. Another example is using technology to motivate the focus learner and keep him engaged. My focus learner learns best when it is provided, when he is provided with hands-on materials. So I blah, blah, blah. Part two, cite the specific research or theory that guided your choices of learning, tasks, materials, and plan supports and show specifically how it was applied to your lesson or teaching practice. Prompt 3D, explain how throughout the learning segment, you will help the focus learner to generalize, maintain, or self-manage the knowledge, skills, and plan supports related to the learning goal. Organizing Prompt 3D, did you incorporate real life experiences or examples to help your focus learner generalize, maintain, and self-manage? What will you do after the lessons to build generalization and maintenance, opportunities to generalize the information to a different context. Prompt four, supporting the focus learner's use of expressive and receptive communication.
understanding rubric level progressions for prompt four, what to avoid. There's no automatic one. The lower level three means the candidate has a superficial view of communication support, which is not aligned with the communication skill. There are no supports planned for the use of the communication skill, and the identified communication skill is not aligned with the learning goal. Meeting the standard at level three means the candidate describes in a general way how the focused learner is supported to use the identified expressive or receptive communication skill to participate in the learning task and or demonstrate learning. General support should go beyond providing opportunities to use the communication skill, i.e. practice alone is not enough at this level. Communication support helps the focus learner understand how to engage in the learning task and or demonstrate learning. Communication supports may include instructional materials and strategies that are created, elected, modified, or scaffolded to assist the focus learner. Prompt 4A, communication skill. Identify and describe one communication skill related to the learning goal that the focus learner will need to use to participate in the learning tasks and or demonstrate learning. Consider the focus learner's strengths and needs related to the communication skill. Examples of communication skills include retelling a story, explaining a mathematics problem-solving strategy, answering questions, appropriately expressing frustration, selecting the right sign, requesting assistance, selecting a picture, starting or stopping communication, and responding to a prompt or cue. Prompt 4B, explain how you plan to support the focus learner's use of the communication skill. Plan supports for communication can include instructional strategies such as vocabulary development, modeling, guided practice, materials such as graphic organizers, dictionary, spell check, or accommodations such as assistive technology. Describe how the supports assist the focus learner in acquiring, maintaining, and are generalizing the communication skill. Provide an example for your lesson plans of this plan support. Prompt five, monitoring learning. Understanding rubric level progressions at prompt five, what to avoid. There's no automatic one. Below a three means that there's insufficient evidence to monitor focus learners' progress toward the objectives. Meeting the standard means the baseline data, daily assessment records, and all other planned assessments are aligned to all lesson objectives and provide evidence to monitor the focus learners' progress relative to the learning goal at various points within the learning segment. Prompt 5A is explain how the assessments and the daily assessment record, including all baseline data, will provide evidence of the focus learner's progress toward the learning goal through the lesson objectives. The level of support and challenge appropriate for the focus learner's needs. Organizing prompt 5A, did you talk about baseline data and how with that knowledge your planned assessments will monitor growth? Did you describe each assessment and give examples toward meeting objectives and the goal? How will the data be used? Prompt 5B. Explain how you plan to involve the focus learner in monitoring his or her own learning progress. Organizing Prompt 5B, did you give a specific example of what the focus learner will do to monitor their own learning? the end.